Hi, everybody. Welcome to today's uh, webinar. Today, we'll be talking about getting green certified. And so today, we have with us um, our staff member, Kim Gaju Alexander, who has been with the organization for a number of years now, I believe it's eight years, who is our resident expert on all things green certification, including the B Corps certification, as well as the recently acquired Montgomery County Green Business Certification. So Kim, I will go ahead and pass the floor over to you. Go grab some water, Em. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Um, hi, I'm Kim Gatch Alexander. I'm one of the directors of Bethesda Green. Um, as Emily mentioned, I've been with Bethesda Green for almost eight years now. Um, and I am a subject matter expert in B Corps certification and have an affiliation with a number of green business certifications uh, from the state of Maryland and from lots of other um, different areas. So Emily, we'll go ahead and advance to the next slides. So a quick overview today. There's this is a very small group, so Feel free to take yourself off mute to ask questions. Um, so, because we do have a small group, oh, you're you're more than welcome to use the chat if you'd like. But feel free to just take yourself off mute and ask your questions, and you can stop me at any time. Or um, Mike will also be presenting. Mike is our green business certification associate at Bethesda Green. He'll also be presenting as well. So, quick overview of Montgomery County Green Business Certification. Then we'll do a quick overview of the uh, B Corp program, and then the SDG Action Manager. Um, and then we'll compare um, which businesses should use which, um, and then closing remarks and questions, but we have a very small group, so you can feel free to stop and ask questions at any time. So next. All right, so a little bit about our community. Um, we are, we had a the Best for DMV campaign running. Um, this was an effort to bring more B Corps certified businesses and get more uh, businesses in Montgomery County and then also um, in the DC metro area to become B Corps certified. The campaign is currently in transition actually to another organization. Um, if folks are interested, um, I'm, I can provide more information on that. Um, we also have a number of academic partnerships with almost all of the area universities. If you're interested in receiving student support for any type of green certification or um, anything related to your business, um, if you would like a student team, I'm happy to connect you with uh, one of the local academic universities. Um, and then we do offer on a case by case basis, we offer one on one B Corp consulting if you're interested. I think the next slide is Montgomery County Green Business. So I'm actually going to let Mike present. And Mike is our, as I mentioned, our Green Business Program Associates. So Mike, I'll let you introduce yourself and take it away. Hi, everyone. I started with Bethesda Green back in January and I'm working on the Green Business Certification for Montgomery County. Um, this graphic we put together, um, it shows the B cores in Montgomery County, the B local mid-Atlantic um, organizations as well, and also past Montgomery County green business certificate certified uh, businesses, such as All Eco Design Center in Wheaton, as well as Green Plate Catering in Wheaton. And some examples of B Corps in Montgomery County are Microvest Capital Management, as well as Warburg Park Retail. Next slide, please. So we'll get into the explaining the green business certification program a little bit. Uh, which currently Bethesda Green is helping to relaunch this summer. Next slide, slide, please. So the Green Business Certification Program launched in October 2010. It's a voluntary recognition program sponsored by the Department of Ed Environmental Protections. Um, it's business focused, but uh, primarily uh, um, focused at businesses ah, operating in office spaces. <laughs> Primarily focus on business operating in office spaces, as well as those conducting landscaping, rather than manufacturing in other, other industries. Um, the business green business certification program operates by focusing on an individual location. For example, in the past, uh, Fitzgerald uh, Auto Malls was was certified for individual location, although there's many locations throughout Maryland. There was a lapse in certifications due to the pandemic as many businesses were shut down. So, and with that, most of the businesses expired as there's a three year period. Uh, but we learned many things from the pandemic, including the need for integrating remote and hybrid requirements into the certification. For the relaunch, we have, we have done significant developments 
with the questionnaires, expanding the expanding the questionnaires to different sections, as well as the structure of the certification, as well as the accessibility. Next slide, please. So you may ask, why a green business certification, specifically in Montgomery County or others? For many, it's a, a primary driver towards a green business certification lies within recognizing the consequences of climate change, and looking to expand expand your values of sustainability to the workplace. And many businesses, another, another motivation is many businesses already practice sustainability, but applying for a certification and fulfilling its requirements really provides structure and solidifies this, their commitment to sustainability. Another advantage is engaging in the green business economy, which, which is currently expanding greatly, and there's a lot of room for in, capitalizing on innovation. Also, brand identity. Um, there's, it's very by cap, by forming your brand identity around sustainability, you can attract many customers, and. Also, another advantage is reducing material consumption, and such as energy and water efficiency. And, and many studies have found that by participating in green business certifications, it helps structure a healthy work environment as well as productivity remote. Next slide, please. So this is a little bit about the certification process for the Montgomery County Green Business Certification. So the first step is collecting info on the background of the company, um, industry, contacts, or throughout the process, and also about the nature of the property, if the business leases or loans or owns it, uh, as well as the size of the company, full-time employees. This is important because, because the certification fees and other details are based on the size of the company, which is based on full-time employees. The business operates on a, the certification operates on a cumulative point-based system. Um, for example, there's a mission of questions. Um, there's a mission of questions if they're not applicable, such as if there's landscaping outside of property, obviously that won't be, that won't count against the company. This leads to a threshold percentage for certification and higher scores qualify a higher score qualifies the business for bronze, silver, gold, tiers of recognition. In all, there are seven sections of the certification process, including organizational commitment, waste reduce, reduction and recycling, environmental preferred purchasing, energy and water efficiency, sustainable landscaping and stormwater management, transportation and travel, and remote and hybrid work. The third step is verification of practices. This includes review of documentation from the business as well as the audit. Another important step is, is determining if there's applicability of third-party certifications, such as um, B Corp would be taken into account. And, and also if a business does more outside of the certification, in the certification, there's room for additional actions, which can qualify for additional points outside of what's already required, such as things in Green America and Green Seal. There are questions. After approval, the business receives the certification and is able to display its commitment um, as a green business. Um, other points worth mentioning, the, the renewals required every three years, as well as there's many guides to help businesses develop um, develop certain requirements such as the green team requirement, sustainable policy guide, green purchasing, and so forth. Any questions on the certification process? Feel free to take yourself off mute if you have any questions on the Montgomery County Green Business Certification. I know we had a couple of folks join a little bit later. Uh, again, I'm Kim Gadge Alexander. I'm one of the directors of Bethesda Green. Um, we have a small group here today, so you can either put your questions in the chat or feel free to just take yourself off mute and ask your questions at any time. You can interrupt us. 
Do any questions on the green business certification? All right, we will continue on. Uh, so I'm going to be presenting on B Lab and B Core certification. Um, like I said uh, at the beginning, I have experience with a number of different B of certifications. So if you have questions on businesses for the Bay or Green America certification, uh, feel free to um, ask those questions as well. So a little bit about B Lab. So B Lab is a nonprofit organization. They're based around uh, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. They are the certifying organization that certifies companies to become B Core certified, um, and their mission is that businesses will be a force for good um, and that all businesses are going to be are going to compete to be not best in the world but best for the world in terms of uh, social and environmental performance next slide em. so uh, Mike already talked about some of the benefits of uh, green business certification I'm going to talk specifically about B Corps certification um, and one of the biggest attractors for B Corps certification is actually attracting talent so um, a lot of the younger workforce, especially those coming out of college right now, are really interested in working for social, uh, socially um, driven organizations um, and organizations that are benchmarking their social and environmental performance. Um, and a lot of the companies want to hire the best and the brightest. So um, they actually listen to when interns tell them uh, to become a mission driven organization. And B, through B Corps certification is one of the ways that companies do that. So attracting talent is actually huge for B Corps certification. Another reason why companies uh, become B Corps certified is so that they can maintain their values um, if the company is ever sold or through their succession planning. Um, that's one of the reasons they're able to maintain their social and environmental performance. So uh, a lot of companies want to value their social and environmental performance on the same plane that they do profits and revenues. And B Corps certification and becoming a benefit corporation is one of the ways the business can do that. Next slide. Um. So attracting talent leaders, um, I believe, are we going to be sending out the resources documents M, that we had put together? Okay, these resources listed on the attracting talent website, as I said, it's one of the main reasons why companies become B Corps certified. Um, these resources are available if you're interested in looking at some of the studies that have been done on uh, younger workforce uh, be, uh, wanting to work for social uh, uh, mission, socially mission-driven and environmentally mission-driven uh, companies. Next slide. Okay, so the process is similar to the um, green business certification process. The company is going to go through an assessment period where they're going to be answering questions um, about the company. Um, there's five different sections of the assessment. It is designed to be comprehensive. It is not designed to be easy. Um, I think there's only around 56 or 5,700 companies worldwide that are B Corps certified currently. Um, and so it's designed to be a more rigorous process. Um, which is why it's not super easy to get. Um, and some companies, it takes them years to actually get certified. But the first step will be going through the B Impact Assessment. The next step would be comparing. Uh, so B Lab would actually compare you to your industry peers based on the size and sector of your business and a benchmarks created. Um, and then the third step would be actually improving your score so that you could actually become B Corps certified. I should also mention that this certification specifically B Lab certification is for for-profit businesses only. The Montgomery County Green Business Certification is for for-profit and for not-for-profit um, organizations. So if you are a non-for-profit, you do qualify to um, get Montgomery County Green Business Certified, but for B Lab, you do not. You have to be a for-profit business. Next slide, Em. So there's five different areas of the assessment. The first one is governance meaning looking at all of your governance documents, your articles of incorporation, uh, your if what's your designation with the state of Maryland. Uh, second one is your workers. So that's pretty much as you think of it, what's your employee benefits? Do you offer any job training? Do you offer any pipelines for bringing on temporary employees who are, who are contractors, bringing them in as part-time or full-time employees? Uh, community, the first thing that B-Lab wants to know is how do you define your community? You know, where are you headquartered? Are you working in your community at all? Um, are you participating in any local boards? Um, are you working with any underserved populations in your community? Uh, the, th the fourth is actually environment. Um, and this is pretty much as you think about it, it evaluates your land, water, and electricity use. They want to know if you're 
tracking your uh, greenhouse gas emissions, are you using any tools uh, to do that? What tools are you are you doing for that? The fourth one is actually, um, it used to be called customers, it's now called impact business model or IBM. Um, and B-Lab really wants to know, have you changed the mission of your organization to uh, focus on or, or provide a product or a service for any underserved communities? Let's say veterans uh, could, be, could be one of those underserved communities. So, um, those are the five different sections of the assessment. And Emily, I'll have you go to the next slide. So as I mentioned, here's a little bit more in depth about the different impact areas um, and what they cover. Um, and the company's business model is now um, actually weighted fairly heavily in the assessment before it was not weighted as heavily, but now um, there's actually a lot more uh, impact business model questions. Um, they, B-Lab really wants to focus on companies um, being social and environmentally, uh, being social and environmentally um, conscious from the inside out, um, so that they're not just focused on philanthropy. So using philanthropy just as a as a vehicle for being mission driven is is not really um, what Beat Lab certification is about. It's more about changing your processes and changing your policies from inside out to make sure that you are um, a socially and environmentally uh, driven company. Um, so I'm going to stop there. Was there any questions about that so far? If not, I'll continue on. All right, Emily, next slide, please. So becoming B Corps certified. Um, you're gonna meet the performance requirements, which I'll talk about in a minute. And then there are some legal requirements. As I mentioned before, you actually have to change your designation with this. I think are most of the folks here are state of Maryland, correct? Yes. Uh, so you would need to change your articles of incorporation to become a benefit corporation with the state of Maryland, which does come with an annual reporting requirement and does come with an annual fee. Uh, so you're providing that uh, the information to the state of Maryland to say that, yes, we are a benefit corporation and here's how we're doing it year after year. Uh, once you become B Corps certified, you'd sign the Declaration of Interdependence, saying that we're all in this together, um, meeting the transparency requirements, meaning what are you reporting out to the public or what are you reporting out to your employees? Um, and then there is an annual fee associated with, um, it's based on your percentage of revenue, which we'll talk about in a minute. Next slide. So here's the performance requirements. So uh, they say it takes two to four hours to complete. I've never met a business that completed the assessment in two to four hours. Most of the businesses that I work with are small um, and a lot of them don't have their policies written down. So we actually spend a lot of time writing the policies down so that they actually have documentation to submit to B-Lab. The second one is getting a score of at least 80. So the there's about 200 questions in the assessment um, most companies that I work with um, do not get a score of 80 to start with. It's something that they have to aspire to. Um, and then the top score that you can get is 200. Um, and then after you submit all of your documentation and you get a score of at least 80, um, you'll go into what's called the verification queue. And then you'll begin the auditing process with B-Lab. Um, just so you know, the current wait times are pretty significant uh, for companies. If they're small enterprises, it can be up to six months uh, for some uh, medium to large size businesses. It can be a year or more, just so folks are aware. Um, and completing the disclosure questionnaire, it's basically asking, um, what does your business do? Do you participate um, in child labor? Um, are you in the alcohol, tobacco, and firearms industry? Um, and then background checks are required for the owners. Okay, so scoring, as I mentioned, most of the companies uh, generally come in around the 80 mark because uh, that's the minimum in order to grow to acquire certification. Um, the highest is 200, as I mentioned, um, and then there's each of the questions is weighted. So some of the um, more complicated questions like becoming a benefit corporation uh, can be up as to the score of around 10. And then most of the questions are actually worth around um, one to two points each. Uh, so four ways that I encourage folks to actually increase their score. One is formalizing policies. As I mentioned, I work mostly with small businesses and a lot of them do things on the norm that they don't actually have written down. Um, so you might be offering 
pro bono services and not tracking them. So those are one of the things that we do um, is formalizing policies and then tracking impact metrics. So picking a metric other than profits and revenues to track, like as I mentioned before, greenhouse gas emissions or uh, tracking your volunteer hours. What, how many volunteer hours are your employees doing? Uh, including your suppliers. Uh, this is a big thing, especially if you're tracking emissions, uh, including your suppliers, um, especially I think for scope one, two, and three uh, for tracking greenhouse gas emissions. Um, so are your suppliers local or are they not local? What are their, what are their carbon emissions? Uh, B-Lab would like to know that. Um, and then making it official after you get certified, they wanna know, are you announcing to the world that these are our values um, and we're a socially and environmentally driven company? Next. So as I mentioned, the legal requirements. So the state of Maryland offers what's called a benefit corporation or a socially public benefit corporation. So you would need to change your designation. If you're an S corp or a C corp, you would change your designation with the state of Maryland, the secretary of state's office to become a socially public benefit corporation. Um, and that's meeting the legal requirement to become B Corp certified. So I also want to mention that there's some confusion. Um, if you become a benefit corporation, that does not mean you are B Corp certified business. You have to actually go through the certification process with B Lab in order to become a B Corp certified business. But you can become a benefit corporation at any time without becoming B Corp certified. Next. Sign the Declaration of Interdependence. As I mentioned, we're all in this together. So combating climate change. Uh, so you would sign the Declaration of Interdependence. And then fourth M, next slide. Uh, is the transparency requirement. So basically, um, each company that becomes B4 certified gets put into the into B Labs directory, um, and then you would be able to see how a company scored on each of the different sections and each of the different areas. And this gets reported out to the public. So it's basically showing the transparency and how you scored in each of the sections. So if you scored really low in a section, uh, there's not minimum reporting requirements yet that is on the way in the next version of uh, the B Impact Assessment. Um, so I would encourage you if you're interested to get um, certified sooner rather than later, um, unless you're ready to meet uh, the minimum requirements that are gonna be coming up for each of the different sections. Next slide. So this, these right here are two different companies that are located in Montgomery County. They're small businesses um, and they these are their current scores as of a a few years ago. Um, and basically, uh, when you click on their profile through B Labs directory, this is one of the things that you'll see is you'll see their logo, what their score was, and then what the benchmark is for their industry. So that's the little bar at the bottom. It shows what the benchmark is for their industry. Next. Emma, I'm going to have you skip over the slide. Okay, so certification timeline pathways, and this also includes the annual fee. The annual fee has been updated, which is why we skipped over the last slide. Um, so the small enterprises, this, these are the current wait times for actually verifi for verification and then potentially getting certified. Um, and then if you're a business that's zero to 150,000, your annual fee is $2,000. And then it goes all the way up to very, very large enterprises. Um, but as you can see, the wait times, um, to get certified are pretty significant. So if you're interested in getting certified, I would encourage you to um, get, get in the queue sooner rather than later. Um, B-Lab is very furiously hiring auditors. <laughs> um, some folks do auditing on site. Um, so it depends on what you what your business is um, versus if you're working in a home office, you might not receive um, an in-person audit. But um, for larger manufacturing or larger companies, there would definitely be an on-site audit that B-Lab would do. Okay, so we're not going to do a tour today. If you're interested, you can reach out to me and let me know if you're interested in doing a tour of, um, of the certification. Next. So what happens after certification? So um, there's a champions retreat every year for all of the companies that are B Corps certified within the US and Canada. Um, there's also other retreats around the world because um, there's B Lab headquarters all around the world. Uh, Be the change. Um, is a series of different campaigns to help companies um, become more socially and environmentally uh, driven. B Work is a directory for comp for um, jobs and internships that are available through B Four certified companies. Um, and the Beehive is basically um, a networking tool where companies can go on, they can see events that are happening, they can ask questions of other B Corp certified businesses, they can meet other B Corp certified businesses. Um, and it's a really great place for resources after, after you get certified. Okay, I'm
So this is a screenshot of the Beehive. You can see there's directory, there's groups, there's networks, there's also marketplaces. Um, if you're a product driven company, Company and you're looking for a marketplace, um, you could go and check out the marketplace. So I will mention that um, B Corp certification right now for companies that are B Corp certified, the, the marketplace is around $1 trillion. So, and it's growing every single year. All right, next slide. So these are a couple of the different initiatives that are happening uh, within the B Corp community. Uh, be the change, there's a climate collective group that's meeting regularly. Um, there's building the B economy and building a more inclusive economy. Uh, we do have a B local mid-Atlantic group. If you're interested, I think we have a slide on that later. Uh, if you're interested in meeting other B Corps certified businesses in the area. Next slide. Um, and as I mentioned, here's a few of the opportunities that we have with um, some of our local academic partners. Uh, we've done a employee handbooks. We actually do a lot of employee handbooks. So if you don't have one, let me know. Um, board of putting together board of advisors, cost benefit analyses, um, environmental analyses. If you're interested in um, all these things are, are going to be questions in the assessment. So if you need support from a student team on that, let me know and I can connect you with one of the area the other student team to help you answer one of those questions. Next, Be Local Mid-Atlantic, as I mentioned, it's a volunteer group of B Corps certified businesses in the area who support other uh, B Corps certified businesses in the area. Um, companies that are B Corps certified tend to use other B Corps certified companies as their suppliers. Um, so this would be a good area to get connected to some local suppliers if you're interested. Um, and also if you're interested in just learning more about them, their website's right down there. You can sign up for their newsletter. I'm the partnerships chair on B Local Mid-Atlantic. So um, I'll give them a good shout out. <laughs> um, they're really great, really great organization. Uh, recertification. I don't think anybody here is currently certified. Is that correct? Do we know? No, I think we'll skip over recertification. If you are interested in recertifying or if you already are B Corps certified, let me know and we can support you with recertification. Skip over that. Uh, this is an example of one of the campaigns, the net zero promise, uh, net zero by 2030. So um, if you're a company who's B Corps certified, B Lab is striving to get most of the companies uh, to be net zero by 2030. So this is an example of a campaign that they're that they're currently offering and they're offering our resources to support companies uh, to become net zero. Next, the SDG Action Manager. Um, it was created by the UN Global Compact. This is a tool that's offered through B-Lab. Um, it's basically an on-ramp. If you're not ready to get certified and if you just want one specific project to work on, um, this would be a really great way to go. So um, there's all of the, the SDGs, which I think we have a slide on next. So we can see all of the different SDGs, there they are. Uh, so if you're a food business, you might focus on the SDG of zero hunger, which is number two. Um, so it's a great way if you're not ready for certification to go on to the platform and sort of see how the questions are set up, see how scoring works. You will not get a score if you focus on SDGs, but it can also be a really great marketing tool. So you can say to your audience, hey, you know, we're not ready for certification, but we're really focused on this SDG of zero hunger and here's how we're doing it. Uh, so it's a really, way, really great way to marketing and also connect with customers and other stakeholders. Next slide. So this is what one of the questions looks like and what one of the SDGs looks like. Um, if you're interested, the UN Global Compact as a whole, different website on that, we can send you that as a resource. Um, but this is what it, this is goal 13, um, tackling climate change. Uh, so you would be answering questions based on the specific indicators, which are 13.1, 13.2. Uh, you'd be answering questions based on those specific indicators for that SDG. Next. So. Uh, the differences. So if you are a company who's ready to become B Corps certified, I would start with the BIA. As I mentioned, it is comprehensive. It is not designed to be easy. There's about 200 questions. Um, it's a, it's a gated, it's a gated questionnaire. So it, more questions will open up depending on how you answer previous questions, you will get an overall score. Um, if you're looking just to get your feet wet and just to get started, I would start with the SDG Action Manager. Um, you'll get, as I mentioned, it's a module, it's about 30 questions. You will not get an overall score, but you'll be able to see how the questions are laid out. You'll be able to focus on one specific area, like zero hunger, um, so that you can start to get your feet, with, feet wet with um, tracking your metrics. Next. So as I mentioned, 
BIA first. If you are 100% on board and ready to get certified, um, you'll start with the SDG Action Manager first. If you just want to get your feet wet and you want to get started with tracking your metrics, if you've never tracked impact metrics before, I would start with the SDG Action Manager. Next. Here's some of the resources, Emily, I think you're going to send those out as a follow up. Um, so these have lots of different resources for companies to use um, for either getting certified or for looking at examples of what other companies are doing for inclusive hiring practices, those sorts of things. Um, so those will be sent out as follow up from the workshop. Next. And then Emily, these are the SDG Compass. I'm not familiar with that. Do you want to say a few words on that? Sure. Uh, so as Kim mentioned, <clears throat> excuse me. As Kim mentioned, within the SDGs, each SDG has layering, um, I forget what they call them, but the 13.1, they have layering goals within each overarching goal. And so the SDG indicators, yeah. Indicators. Yeah. yeah. So the SDG compass helps you narrow in and focus on which specific indicator you want to to target. And then it also is, provides a bunch of tools and resources within those indicators to say, if you're targeting zero hunger and you're targeting one of the indicators within that, here are some of the solutions that other people have done to target those things. And so it kind of gives you ideas as well as tools and resources to target um, specific areas. These will all be sent out afterwards. Um, and these will be clickable links when we send out the slides. All right, next slide. All right, uh, this is a little bit more information if you're interested in our consulting services. And then I think that was the end of the presentation. So if folks have questions at this time, we are ready for them. And we can scroll back through the presentation if you need us to, or and we can stop sharing. Okay. I do just kind of want to open up the floor and then I want to invite people if they're able to come off mute and to tell me where you're coming from today. And as Kim mentioned, um, the B Corps certification process is only available to for-profit businesses and the uh, Montgomery County Green, Pro Green certification is available to both uh, nonprofit and for-profit. So if you could also let me know if you're coming from the nonprofit or the for-profit world as well. Um, Carla, I'm going to go ahead and just pick you out and I'm just going to call on you first. If you're able to come off mute. Potentially not. Malcolm, are you still there? Hi. Are you, can you guys hear me okay? Yeah, we can hear you. Uh, well, first of all, I just want to thank you guys. That was a wonderful presentation. Um, I'm actually coming um, from a, uh, a position similar to you guys. I serve as the Supplier Diversity Program Manager with the Maryland National Capital Park and Planning Commission. Um, a major function of my job is to do outreach to find um, certified local small businesses and minority-owned businesses. Um, if these firms don't hold certifications, I can help to walk them through those processes. But another major part and why I didn't want to interrupt to make sure that if there were any vendors on the line could, you know, have priority um, is to kind of establish what I uh, have coined as uh, community outreach partners. Um, we, we, we both seem to, you know, um, work in the same realm as far as helping businesses with these very valuable certifications um, and with the Park and Planning Commission, um, I see a lot of um, um, collateral collaboration opportunities. Uh, we have a lot of firms that work in the landscaping industries and um, some arborists, you know, just thinking of things offhand. Um, and so I have a, a pretty extensive database of vendors that I would love to, you know, after if you guys would like to, you know, kind of establish that affinity outreach, uh, you know, relationship, I could share your information for these sessions to you know, hopefully kind of increase some participation and vice versa, you know, so um, just here as a resource. And if it's OK with you guys, I'd like to leave my uh, my program contact information with the Park and Planning Commission in the chat. And if anybody wanted to reach out, I'm here to help and here to serve. So thank you so much again. Sounds great, Malcolm. We'll definitely stay connected. <laughs> thank you so much. I really appreciate it. All right. Daniel, are you there and are you able to come off mute and tell us what you're coming from uh, as a, are you a business owner? Are you a nonprofit, working at a nonprofit, any of those types of things? 
Uh, yeah, hi everyone. I'm actually kind of like on the same boat as uh, Malcolm. Um, I work for Montgomery College. I am the energy manager. And what I wanted to, to get from this session is kind of like get to know what type of certifications are there for businesses and, you know, get um, vendors um, on board uh, in, in the aspect that Montgomery College is always looking to, uh, you know, start new programs in the energy and sustainability aspect. And it'll be great if we can have minority vendors and, you know, and vendors with this type of certifications. That's great. And Daniel, just so you know, we um, on our Best for DMV steering committee, um, we actually have a professor from Montgomery College. Her name is Rebecca Razavi. Um, so I'm happy to connect you with her um, as well, just um, so you know that there's somebody actually already working on some of this um, at Montgomery College. But um, we're absolutely, we've actually had a couple of student teams, um, as I mentioned, the student teams op opportunities. So um, we can also stay connected on that too. I think that'd be great. Yeah, yeah, that'd be great. Uh, I mean, you know, I work for the facilities department and we are basically the ones who manage all the buildings and, and do all of the projects, right? So it'll be great if we can stay connected. And if, if you find vendors that, you know, have potential to to provide some services to the college, you know, always, I'm always open to hear uh, and learn about them. Yeah, we do. And definitely through the Montgomery County Green Business Certification Program, I think that'd be a good fit. So yeah, we'll stay connected on that. Perfect, thank you. Awesome. Well, I'm not sure that Carla is there. So I think I um, will actually just, oh, Carla, are you there? Yes, sorry, I was in a, in a, on a call. <laughs> I was gonna get back to you guys. How are you? I'm good, how are you? I was <laughs> kind of just asking if you wanted to tell us a little bit. I mean, I know a little bit, but if you want to tell Kim a little bit about where you're coming from and what your interest was in uh, in learning about these different kind of green business certifications. Sure, sure. So my name is Carla Kim and I live in Olney. And uh, I we lived in Silver Spring before, so we were always connected with the Wheaton, or we know a lot about the Wheaton area. Um, but it, my business is a graphic design marketing business, and I um, work with environmental organizations or green brands. And that is my goal is to provide um, services that thinking about the whole process of what a project where a project will end up. That is, to me, is a big, a big um, aspect of my business is to make sure that I do things in a green responsible way, um, taking it into consideration colors, inks, um, you know, processes, the material, making sure that everything is coming from a source that is either local or no more than, you know, certain miles where, you know, uh, making sure that the material is um, sustainable and the process, you know, that I work with clients are also sustainable. So, yes, so I just- That's great, Carla, you should apply for certification. Yes, yes, so I have been looking into, I believe there were three different um, certifications that I was looking into. So um, I am in that process. <laughs> Well, let us know how we can support you, okay? Sounds good. Okay. Awesome, thanks for sharing, Carla. All right, was there any other questions in the room? Any of the materials strike anything with you? Daniel, I know that you were looking to learn a bit more about what certifications were out there. Was that answered for you or were there others that you had in mind? I know Kim, you also mentioned the businesses for the Bay as well as Green America, um, which we know a bit about too. And would those be of interest to you, Daniel, or not at this time? Not at this time, uh, but, you know, I, I was familiar with the Green Seal certification uh, because I, I think the college, uh, the one of the crews in Tacoma Park has that uh, certification. Um, and again, you know, my, my goal today was just to learn about these certifications because whenever we put like RFPs, you know, um, we can include those certifications. So we can push for companies to include that and, and pursue these type of certifications so we can contribute to um, you know, a more sustainable way of uh, doing business. 
Yeah, and Green Seal's fantastic for cleaning products. Yeah. That's their bread I, and butter. So yeah, they're great. Yeah, uh, one of the crews that you know maintains the building, uh buildings in Tacoma Park, they 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 have that certification. Awesome. Well, I'm glad that you were able to get um, some value out of today and learn some more about the certifications. So I guess at this time, if there's no more questions in the room, I will go ahead and just wrap up and just say thank you, everybody, for coming today. And I also just want to remind you that this is the second of our four-part series. We will be in person on Tuesday the 16th to learn from green entrepreneurs. We'll hear from two local Montgomery County businesses that are um, green businesses and kind of two different industries. And we'll hear how they were both able to embed sustainability practices into the growth of their business. And then on Thursday, we will be hearing from a local marketing expert um, who will talk to you about marketing your story. And this will specifically be for some of those business owners in the room who will, are more interested in, I'm a small business, how do I get my name out there? And we'll talk through some of those practices. Um, so I'm going to go ahead. Thanks, and everybody. Thank you. Great Thank work. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you so much.